Hello, um, my name is Chance Hayes, and today, or this week, I, I chose to learn a little more about paraprofessionals. Um, I chose to, to study paraprofessionals because um, in the reading, it was, it was just a little vague. Um, they had, you know, the three different uh, levels, uh, professional, paraprofessional, and volunteer. Um, and, you know, their definition for paraprofessional was someone who might be skilled in certain things, but not have quite the um, amount of education or experience as a professional. And so it kind of sparked my interest um, of kind of what areas they were involved in in the workplace. And so that's what I chose to to uh, look into a little bit. <clears throat> Um, so the news article I found, um, I ended up choosing from ABC News, um, but there were almost on all the sites kind of the same, same article almost on every site, <clears throat> um, had the similar story had the same issues. Um, but this article from ABC News was uh, called... Uh, school sticking with in-person learning scramble for subs. Um, and it talked about how the Omicron variant of COVID uh, was taking quite a toll on the workplace in school districts uh, for teachers uh, when they had to find a, a substitute for their for their classes. Um, so it, it talked about uh, this one lady who had to borrow some paraprofessionals from other classrooms for short stretches um, in her school day. Um, and this class was uh, for students with disabilities. And she she went on to say um, that it was very difficult to get through my lesson plans when somebody doesn't know your students, when somebody is not used to working with students with disabilities. And she said, some students need sensory inputs, some students need to be spoon-fed, so it's very hard to train someone on the spot. So I kind of just talked about how uh, paraprofessionals were there uh, if they were needed, but um, they weren't able to fully uh, encapsulate what they were needed to do at all times. So they were useful, but at the same time, um, they weren't the best option. Um, and so moving on to the scholarly article, um, it was a journal, um, titled working together as culture brokers by building trusting alliances with bilingual and bicultural newcomer pro paraprofessionals. And it kind of had the same idea. Um, there were mixed feelings in this article, um, they talked about the relationship of the professionals with the paraprofessionals in the workplace. Um, and, and this article is mainly about uh, paraprofessionals that were used um, for the bilingual aspect. So knowing all the workplace terms um, in another language and helping them translate and speak. Um, they came to two important conclusions that I'd like to share um, the first was that professionals need to help newcomer paraprofessionals to avoid burnout by assisting them in setting boundaries for community claims on their time and energy. Any such guidance should remain sensitive to the paraprofessional's need to attend his or her community in any supervisory relationship. And so they, they talked a lot about this, this relationship and how they need to kind of work together to know with the strengths and weaknesses of the paraprofessional that they're working with. Um, so that way they can work around them um, and work with them. <clears throat> the other finding that they came to a conclusion with was um, understanding the parallel process existing between the community work of the paraprofessional and the dynamics of the supervisory relationship was the most critical aspect of attending to this work with humility and true openness to mutual growth. So. There was those two um, uh, aspects that really helped um, the workplace relationship grow. That was um, the pr 
process um, and the dynamics of the relationship. Um, so that was um, something useful for them. Um, for the code of ethics, um, I kind of dug around uh, trying to find something uh, because the code of ethics was for social workers and paraprofessionals aren't exactly um, considered social workers. They, they can be considered um, to a point um, someone who is trained in specific areas within social work, but not receiving like a higher um, education or um, the experience required. Um, but um, I chose um, under the Code of Ethics, there was a section called Referral for Services, um, mainly talking about um, how social workers should refer clients to other professionals when their own experience doesn't um, match their needs or doesn't match what um, they can't do really for those people. So um, this, this section within the Code of Ethics talks about how they should refer their clients to other professionals to take uh, the appropriate steps to facilitate an orderly transfer of responsibility rather than them just guessing and trying to help them when they're not trained or have no experience um, within that um, area. So that's what I found under the Code of Ethics and I think it, it matches pretty well. So uh, mainly for paraprofessionals, you, you don't want to uh, get too deep into what you're doing and pretend like you're a professional. Um, they should hand off that job to someone who, who knows what they're talking about and who is trained to do that. And so um, both the articles uh, that, um, both the news article and the journal article, um, they both had something in common, which was they both had mixed feelings about paraprofessionals. Um, paraprofessionals can be useful, uh, but it really depends on the time and what is, what is needed really. Um, and so they, they both focused on the negatives. Um, the scholar, scholarly article did talk about the positives and how they can work on the relationship to, um, make it so that they, they can work together better in the workplace and how they can be a tool used in the workplace. Um, but both talked about how, you know, these paraprofessionals, they are skilled in certain areas, but other than that, they are not trained and have no experience in the, the higher levels. So they don't as have high of expectations or, um, uh, a code of ethics, basically, um, when they, when the professionals, uh, live by this, this code and they have a higher standard. Um, so they kind of expect a little bit more, but paraprofessionals aren't exactly trained. They don't have the education, um, to know what these professionals, um, are needing. Um, they are there to provide the service that they are skilled in. And so, both of these these articles kind of hinted at that. Um, the scholarly article did talk about how um, professionals and paraprofessionals can work together to um, make this distance or this um, yeah the distance between these these two jobs a little smaller that they can work together and um, work in harmony to get um, to achieve a, a common goal or purpose. Um, to end, um, I just wanted to leave you guys with a question. Um, it's more kind of like an opinion question, but do you consider paraprofessionals necessary and what benefits could they offer that professionals can't offer? So kind of talking about what advantages do they have, um, when a professional is maybe not available and that's it i will see you guys next week <laughs>